did you ever don't worry about this that's old news it's look look into the orb orbs plural forget do did you ever buy an entire pack of pens specifically because you wanted one pens of the pens that was in the pens at the packet of pens because that's what i done did i did it before as well with highlighters um I bought a packet of highlighters specifically to get a pink highlighter. I got more pink highlighters. More pink. Um, I wanted a blue. I wanted to do something blue on this page to complement the because. So I did this, and it's greens and like, like cool goblin greens, and, you know, so reds, sort of somewhat unintentionally. Like I didn't intend to have a a spread uh. of red. It just so happened. I drew a Hellboy, I drew another Hellboy, and I was like, well, it makes sense if it's, I'm drawing Hellboy to draw it red. Greys and blacks, pink, purple. It's, it's sort of, you know, you get it. Um, and then when it came to this, I was like, well, I don't, don't want to draw something pinky purpley. I mean, I, I could make it work, but I, I want to draw something blue. Uh, um, so I... I I also I didn't want to buy like a Copic marker or something because I could I could have just bought a couple of blue Copic Copic Marquess, um, but I I don't want to I don't want them to bleed through. I'm going to be doing some more with this. Um, I don't want them to bleed through. So what I was looking for was like a beryl felt tip pens. We have them over here. Beryl felt tip. They're often found in schools. Felt tip pens. Pretty fucking whatever. Um, but they do a brush version, which is they're really really decent felt tip pens they've got quite a bit of ink out of them um in them on them around them um and you get a good 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 the brush isn't like fine for drawing like fine brush pen for drawing but they're really good for coloring it they're good coloring pens for like basic coloring that's why they're in schools for kids but i couldn't find any in the shop but i did find these and they're you know expensive but um eh, it's my birthday today the day i'm recording this right now as i sit recording this right now it's my fucking birthday um i'm recording this on a different day to what i normally do to to try to keep it mysterious so you don't know exactly which day it is i'm i'm having my birthday um but if you're a, a true fan and follower you might remember what i did last year for my birthday um what i produced um and there's a video of that and it has the date in it so you can figure it out not that it matters i just it, i don't care um do you know what i bought i bought this it's a cushion it's a new cushion for my my desk chair because my desk chair is a piece of shit old old smelly old desk chair and it's not comfortable um and every now and again i'll buy a new cushion uh, just to sit on uh so i did that and it's a nice like it looks like a royal red velvet cushion. so i bought these two treated myself to some pens um just specifically for this one but i quite like the other colors too i quite like the they're quite nice like that that range of highlighters i got that was like regular neon highlighters and then like pastel highlighters also um it's like the pastel colors the green the green looks quite cool and the yellow's yellow and then there's a weird in between like snot bile greeny yellowy green and like a fleshy pink which could be cool and purple's cool so i figured it was going so we're doing blue and yeah i've got a couple of other blues um a blue pen and it's double-ended so that's fun um and then we can draw something blue i was thinking something in the way of when I again in, in the same way uh, how I put comics and things together it's just rather than like uh, uh, um, d deliberating over it and and really taking time to figure out what it is I want to draw I go by what is when I think of what needs to be in this page what's in my head straight away and then i try to put that on the page and so when i thought draw something blue to go on this page and orb and blue first thing in my head for whatever reason was mega man so i think i'm going to draw mega man um i've got google images up so i'm going to be vaguely referencing that but 
I think this is going to be a hand and an arm and then his body and then it was gun, gun arm. Plus I got a gun arm that reacts like Megatron. Um, that's vast air, I think. What's, how does that song go? Oh, fuck knows. Um... This bitch started this. I'ma have the last laugh. Who are you today? Cage or Alex? Never mind, you're a bitch and a phallus. Uh, ooh, mm, I'm not sure I'm happy with. Oh, that's that's all right. That works, I think. Um, Mega Man's mega head. He's got that big fucking helmet on. Him. Uh, ba 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 ba. -ba. I think I've drawn Mega Man like one, one, one time before. Um, was it a good Mega Man? Who knows? Um, but that's, that's, that, that song stuck in my head. I've gone completely off track now because of that fucking song with a gun arm. Um, vast air gun arm Mega Tron lyrics. Um, no, 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 shit, plus I got a gun arm that reacts like me, plus I got a gun arm that reacts like Megatron, I can't spell got. God, this is very interesting for your podcast. You should do that. You, it's not coming up. Shit! God damn it! I know the song. I've met, I think I even mentioned it last week. Um, but I think it's Battle of the Planets. Anyway, I'm drawing Mega Man. Have you seen Mega Man? Do you know about Mega Man's? He's the megaest man in town. He's always smiling, he never frowns. Turn him inside out and upside down, it's Mega Moun. Apparently, I don't know why Mega Moun would be the... Let's give him a little, little torso. And then his pants. His Mega Pants. Um, is Mega Man a robot or is he like an actual man in a suit? I don't think I ever knew that. I played like one, one, one Mega Man game in my life. And it was okay, I guess. Oh, sort of all right. That's the tune to that song. Oh my god. Um, what's what's today's beverage? I thought this could be a, a neat um, new segment, a regular segment of the podcast, because there's um, a, a, a shop, a store across the road from my home, and they sell, um, d d it's called Hooch and Candy, um, and they sell Hooch and candy, alcohol, and loads of American, like shitloads of American candy, like imported candy, and American drinks and sodas and things. And so I go in there every now and again just for things to treat myself, because that's one thing I don't do a fucking enough of. Treat myself, Christ, constant fucking cake bars and candy, fucking snacks all fucking time, Pepsi, Dr. Pepper. Um, but I thought, um, they got so many, like, different and interesting drinks in there every now and again or uh, maybe every now and again or every week now i'll go get another one so today today's drink of the day we're drinking mountain dew major melon look he's like an army soldier and he's a watermelon major melon dew charged with watermelon flavor with other natural flavors charged with watermelon flavor with other natural flavors um I, uh, Mountain Dew is pretty all right. I quite like a Mountain Dew. I quite like watermelon flavored things. I'm not a big fan of watermelon, the fruit. Um, 
I don't know, it just doesn't sort of uh, taste much. It's too water. Um, hmm, that's a tasty soda. I like that. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, would w I would drink that again, and I would finish an entire can of that. Which I might do. Uh, well, that's some excitement for the for the episode. Um, uh, yeah, I, it, it's my birthday. It was it was an alright day. Um, you know, I, I'm past caring about birthdays. Plus, you know, I'm depressed as shit. I don't give a fuck about my birthday. Jesus. Um, well, that said, I did. I bought a new cushion. Wow exciting times and some pens um but i thought it, i had it in just I thought wouldn't it be cool to record podcast on my birthday and just fucking whatever fill a page of my sketchbook um try not to oh I don't know if that soda's fucking with me, but I, oh, I feel like I've got gas and acid boiling up in my fucking chest and mouth. Oh, I think I might die. Oh, wouldn't that be fun if I died during recording of a podcast? I mean, it would be. It'd be like, oh, imagine if I died doing my podcast and everyone watched it and was like, oh my god, you just died doing this podcast. But then it's like, well, how, how have I edited and uploaded it if I've died? whilst recording that doesn't make any sense that's fucking stupid you're a f fucking idiot Ewan you jizz um how I don't I don't know how I want to do his legs I'm looking I've got google images off to the side here um uh, there's a few ways of doing it, I guess I guess doing like that and like that sort of that's that could work and then like that kind of sort of yeah I might be able to make that work mega man mega man does whatever a mega can is he mega yes man he's the mega man look out oh shit it's mega man do you know what I have to do this. Um, is is Mega Man a robot? Um, Mega Man is the eponymous robot from Capcom's Mega Man franchise. He is a lab assistant robot and the surrogate son to Dr. Light. He fights against the evil doctor. Is that it? The evil, just the evil doctor. He doesn't have an evil doctor name. He's a robot. A robot. Mega Man is a robot. So there you go. Answering life's tough questions. I've got this pen too. I've had it for years. And I think it still works. Um, for the dark blue parts. Ooh. I don't think we're bleeding through. Yeah, we're safe. Safe as... Uh, proverbial houses which are safe sometimes how how safe is a house that's the saying safe as houses ah uh, yeah you're all right, mate safe as houses no worries it's all good mate don't even fucking worry about it mate you're fucking sound you got a bad day you got a bad day but do Tell you what, mate, you want to fucking shut your mouth. Well, I'm going to fucking shut it for you. I tell you fucking what, mate, you will fucking listen to your fucking elders. You're going to get yourself fucking slapped, son. I'll tell you fucking what. Mega Man, Mega Man. Find him mostly in Japan. That's where they made Mega Man. They made him in Japan. Look out! Oh my god, it's Japan. The entire country of Japan is coming for you. Run as fast as you can. 
You can't outrun Japan. It will catch you. Oh shit. Look out. Fucking Japan. They've got radioactive lizards and hot school girls who sell their pants in vending machines. It's weird, but I completely get it. I'd probably buy them if I lived there. Learning more about me than you really needed to. Did you know I'm into panties? I've worn a bunch of them in my time. Oh yes, I'm quite the fan of girls' underwear. I've got a collection of my own that I wear sometimes. I'm not even joking. This isn't a funny bit that I'm making up. It's legitimate and I have my own collection of girls underwear that I sometimes wear but not recently because of having put on a bit of weight and back in the day I'd look fucking good and not even that far back in the day just a few years ago I looked fucking good in a pair of girls underwear when I had a flatter tummy and my big fucking dick bunched up or even sticking out um yeah, man, I, I, I've got a good, I've got a collection of like girls' underwear that like some I've taken, maybe some I stole, <laughs> um, and some that were sent to me as gifts of like, oh, you and let's be sexy together on the internet. Here's some of my underwear, stuff like that, um, and some that you know I just have for my own personal use. Because fuck you, I do what the fuck I want. I like because I think because I'm you know bisexual I guess um, I can be turned on by the male body and then I have a male body and again not so much lately but certainly a few years ago and I'm trying to edge my way very gradually back to that stage but I, I don't think it's going to happen um, I, I found my, my body to be very, very sexy at this certain certain times in certain lights. And I've got some nude photos of myself that, frankly, are ridiculously hot. Um, and there's a few people I've sent them to. And lucky fucking them, because these are good fucking photos, man. And if, if you know me, you know I don't take photos of myself in general. Because I, I hate myself. Um, but these photos of me, I've got some of them with girls underwear or some of them not. Um, some of them with nothing at all. Some of them just uh, uh, like a white vest, like a tank top. And, you know, whew, you and gosh, gosh and heck. Um, I mean, my face is ugly, but in I very, very rarely show my face in these kinds of photos. Um, so you could be excused for thinking it was a sexy person that you're looking at pictures of. And not some fucking homeless looking cunt who wears girls underwear are you sick of looking of me looking at looking at hellboy comics good because here's some more hellboy comics <laughs> i posted a picture in my instagram stories there was a box set of, of hellboy comics this was volume one that was contained in the box set and there's three other volumes um it's this one another one another one and then the full uh, omnibus um, omnibus of uh, Hellboy in Hell. So it was like it spanned Mike Mignola's Hellboy from start to finish, basically, which is really fucking cool. Eighty-four pounds uh, for for the four volumes, um, and then they had this one and a couple of others singularly available on the shelf um, for twenty-one pounds each, which means you can buy them individually for £21 each for the same price you could buy them all together in the box which is fine it's cool I guess if you buy them together in a box you at least get a box um, with art on it which is quite cool uh, it was would be a good collector's thing but it's like if you're going to buy the box set you want it to be either so extravagant that paying extra is really worthwhile or you want it to cost less than the price of all the books individually so like even if it was like five ten pound cheaper like that would be you know that would make sense 
but for it to be the same price as the books singularly that seems a bit silly i don't know anyway i got this because i i had um the seed of destruction uh small graphic novel this is a lot more of it um but i gave that away as a gift to somebody so i figured i'd get this again um but i also got something else which because i'm not gonna see i tricked you you thought i was gonna look at more hellboy comics but i'm not i'm gonna look at this instead now again my local co comic book shop is a a um a corporate chain store brand name whatever and as I've, I've complained about again and again and again they very rarely have like cool weird comics they usually just have the standard marvel dc image some 2000 ad and some other stuff so to see an issue of shaolin cowboy on the shelf i was very of the new Shaolin Cowboy by Jeff Darrow. If you know, you, you should. If you watch my videos, you better fucking know who Jeff Darrow is, you silly old sod farts. Come on now. Um, if you don't, fucking stop watching right now and go look up who Jeff Darrow is. Um, he designed all the robots and shit from The Matrix. His artwork's in. Look up fucking hard boiled by Jeff Darrow, it's ridiculous. Shaolin Cowboy is a comic he did years and years ago, I think. I have no knowledge of Shaolin Cowboy in terms of its history and stuff. Um, I just know it's like a Shaolin monk who's a cowboy and he fights loads of shit. Um, and it's Jeff Darrow's ridiculous, over the top, insane, detailed drawings. Um, I've had a quick flick through this and this is issue three. I just, I, I didn't see issues one and two on the shelves at any point in the last few months. Um, but I picked this up just because it was there. Uh, I might buy the collection if it comes out, but I, I might not. I don't know. Um, but yeah, already like having a quick flick through this, it's f f fucking bananas. Uh, the art, as far as like Jeff Darrow's art goes, this is is almost like kind of, eh, is really good. It's really well drawn. Obviously, it's a Jeff Darrow comic, and it's drawn as well as a Jeff Darrow comic would be drawn. But it's the story in this particular issue is like this big it, it it's so small but spread over so many pages with all the movements and stuff um there's not much to see he draws a bunch of stuff i mean so there's a giant chicken that's being chopped up a giant f a featherless chicken being chopped up and this weird fucking jellyfish thing and this lizard and the shaolin cowboy and then yeah, he's he's chopping up with his katana. His toes have come off and it's next cut and there's blood and shit. Um, and I mean, straight away, is all the detail in the stones. You probably can't see this on the screen because my videos are always such poor quality. So good luck, I guess, actually looking at the shit. Um, so he's killing these giant birds. Again, I've not read the first two issues, so I have no context for what's happening. There's this weird guy in a big purple bear costume. Um, and then he gets trapped under the, the the big chicken and he can't get his sword and then he um, I don't know oh the weird guy's eating the lizard's tail and it's just it's so fucking bizarre and then he, yeah they that's he picks up Shaolin Cowboy picks up a stone and then flings it fucking like bullseye from Daredevil style and it hits this guy square in the head. Takes him out, I guess. And at least... So there's there's this mechanical apparatus. This guy is sat on on top of this huge jellyfish thing. This whole thing, it, it's so like... There's been times... I've seen other people do it as well, and I've done it myself. Where you go on Instagram stories and be like, Hey everyone, give me suggestions for something to draw. And you'll get people saying like, Oh, draw fucking ash from pokemon farting in pikachu's mouth or draw superman batman fucking the joker but dressed like pikachu being farted on by ash from pokemon um and then you'll get people saying like draw uh, a, a an asian man in a big purple bear costume riding a mechanical device on top of a jellyfish in a desert surrounded by giant featherless chickens being chopped up by a shaolin monk who's also a cowboy it's just those so many odd random disconnected things put together 
f by people trying to be like weird and funny um and then jeff darrow's just thrown them all into a comic because fucking why not um i don't know if there's any meaning behind it if it has context previous or or continuing after it but it's fucking weird and i i can't say if i really like love it or not i'm just sort of like eh about it like it doesn't have the same draw as something like hard boiled which i mean for one thing that was written by frank miller so that's like eh, the story is is pretty solid because it was written by a pretty solid story writer whereas this i don't know um yeah, Jeff Darrow's story, art, and cover. So Jeff Darrow's just... It feels like he's coming up with this on the fly. Just every page, he's just sort of making it up as he goes along. And then there's a giant featherless chicken, and then the jellyfish crashes into the thing because the guy lost control of the mechanical parts. Oh, and there's also a giant Komodo dragon and this lizard floating down on a, on a paper umbrella. Uh, and the, the speech is really weird as well. Um, they like this. The little lizard is is referring to the Shaolin monk as his new daddy, and then this Komodo dragon <laughs> has his sword and is talking. Uh, you thought this tale ended when you ended my tale. Uh, see, because he chopped his tail off, I guess. But you were really dumb to think that, because I ain't lived this long being a stupid. I ain't lived this long being a stupid dummy. Buddha is merciful. Well, Buddha-daddy, like Buddha and Daddy combined, you are preaching to the wrong choir. Mercy uh, only means thank you in French to me. It's just so like, uh, what? <laughs> like, it, it makes sense. You can read it. They're, they're, they're competent sentences, but they're just so like, what? What the fuck is anyone talking about? What the fuck is happening? And then he's throwing stones again, like missile stones, and then the Komodo dragon's quick with the sword, deflecting them all away. And then he kicks his hat at him, and then his hat has, like, razor blades in it that he activates with this chain that he pulls with his teeth, and then he throws it. And then the hat has, like, this this thing, this bag come out of it that clips itself to the Komodo dragon's neck with the razor blades, and then he pulls the chain again, and the blades tighten, and then beheads the Komodo dragon with his head in the bag thing, which then falls out of the bag, and then he puts the hat... It's like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> it's like a horrible fucking... I don't want to say like an acid trip. It is more like a dream where things just happen in the dream. As the dream's happening, you go, oh, I went to the toilet, and then I lifted the lid and turned around, and then I was in the Sahara Desert. Um, so I kept walking, um, but the camel was uh, a giant mouse, and the mouse said, oh, quick, the cat's coming, let's go. So he ran under the table in the kitchen, um, but the sink was on, and then all the water came out of the sink, uh, and then the cat couldn't get to us because the cat was a submarine, um, but there was a hole in the submarine, so it sank. Um, so then we went to the park, and I saw this girl I really liked, where everything just, like when you're in the dream it's just like oh of course this is the next step and this is the next step and this is the next step but then when you're out of the dream and you think back to it you're like wait what <laughs> what, the, what the actual fuck and that's what this feels like um where it's just like oh okay and then he does this and then this and then this and there is there is a flow of the story but when you really look at it you're like what 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 um and as I say, the artwork is sort of like so. Oh yeah, so the the purple head, the purple bear guy wasn't dead. He comes and puts the sword in Shaolin Cowboy's hand. He takes the stone out of his head, but then Shaolin Cowboy hits it back into his head, and then he's oh, you think he's dead? I've just remembered what happens to him. Um, the little lizard pulls the sword out of his hand. Oh, he's not dead. And then he's attacking him with his fists. Uh, and yeah, I mean, the, and like, uh, goes to hit him, he blocks it, he goes, lucky block, um, but let's see you stop my cloud of fists. And then he's got loads, loads of fists, and Shaolin Cowboy's blocking loads of hands, blocking him. Um, little dragon, I still need your help, you must dig. Um, my fists of, uh, f my, my fists of flurry will smash you into a rice patty. 
um, as he's punching and punching him. I hate kung fu. I hate it. 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 Like wh what? Where did the kung fu bit come from? Why do you hate kung fu? I just none of it makes sense, <laughs> and I can't tell if I like it or not. <laughs> Like, part of me wants to love it. Like, it's so weird and, like, obscure, and that's great. Like, why not make a comic that just is bizarre and doesn't make sense? But at the same time, I'm, I'm like, grasping for meaning and being like, what? Why? What does it mean? <laughs> but then, yeah, the art student in me is like, well, fuck it, just go crazy, it doesn't matter. So, yeah, he's, he's going to die, but then he goes, Jesus, of course. Um, and then morphs into this giant fucking thing, like this weird crab monster with hydra heads. And he, he is the scrotum of this giant creature. He's its bollocks. And then Shaolin Cowboy's fighting it, chopping its arms and heads off and stuff. And again, just insanely detailed. This is where, you know, the Jeff Darrow art really comes into it when it comes to drawing all this shit. I mean, all the, like, it's got barnacles and shit all over its skin, which is cool, and the detail in the, the crab-ish legs is cool. And all these Hydra heads and Shaolin Cowboy chopping them up, all the blood splurts and stuff are really cool. I mean, just to draw, like, a couple of these panels would be a fuck. Drawing page after page of this, this, he's chopping them up. Chop, 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 stab, fucking heads coming off, blood coming out of their mouths. His sneaker up close, chopping heads, chopping heads, biting, gnashing, chopping, cutting, stabbing through its head, chopping the necks. And on and on and on. They're all dying. And he gets flung into the ground and, oh my God. And then the giant jellyfish comes along and is mad at the purple bear guy because uh, you lying asshole you said you loved me but all you wanted was my body and its ability to harvest and store your precious chi well Jesus I am free of your love and payback is a jelly bitch no wait my darling I do like uh, love you you misunderstand me so now the jellyfish is getting its revenge on the shitty little purple guy squishes its head or squeezes its neck and his eyes pop out, which is a very Jeff Darrow thing to have happen. And then his head explodes off of the ball bag of the thing, flings him away through the, the mountain rock. And then there's these dogs uh, with, they've all got, well, some of them have knives instead of front legs. This one's got little pen knives. Um, you never know what you'll run across in the desert, do you? You never do. Tastes kind of like chicken. Save me a wing. And I love, like, one thing I always like about Jeff Darrow's artwork is where, yeah, instead of just drawing dogs in the desert, there's dogs in the desert with knives for feet. This one's got a drumstick hanging off of his collar. This one's got a steak. There's a Coke bottle there. This one's got, um, that one's got a MAGA tattoo. Uh, and this one's, it says MAGA with a finger and then the rest, so MAGA and then fuck the rest. And he's got a mobile phone hanging from his collar. Just like, what? <laughs> like actually what? Um, and then, uh, it ends. <laughs> like, I don't, it's one of the most bizarre comics I've looked through. Like, I've not looked through many weird, crazy, out there bizarre comics, but this is definitely one of the most odd, just hard to comprehend <laughs> comics I've looked through. Um, and again, the art is like, eh? It's just sort of Jeff Darrow artwork, but certainly not his most impressive, but like it fits the story and it's just, I don't know, it's just fucking weird, isn't it? Um, so now let's look at some Hellboy, yes! Um, but what I did, uh, I spent ages looking at um, in the in the store while I was, uh, when I picked this up, was this little sketchbook section at the end. So I figured, well, I'll at least give that a look through here. Because it's, it's not just, you know, the Hellboy comic, which again, I've just poured over and over and over. 
my god, I really got some fucking gas or acid in me. I'm, I think I might be dying. Um, I hope. Oh, tee hee. Um, yeah, I, I just, just every time I look through one of the like older Hellboy comics and the newer ones, but mostly the older ones, it's just how he puts the panels together, how he arranges stuff and composes images, is so like. When he went, because when you look at it and you realise what he's doing and, and how he's placing images, you go, oh yeah, of course, that makes so much sense. Why, why wouldn't you do it like that? But then when you try and do it on your own, you just, it's just like fucking baffling how, how he does it so. And maybe it doesn't come easy to him. Maybe he labours over it. Maybe back in the day he laboured over it. Maybe it did come easy to him. Either way, it's just, it's just really fucking good. Um, sketchbook. So yeah, sketches of like. Uh, Rasputin and everything cool 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 but the stuff we really want to see um, though Hellboy's dad wouldn't show up for years not till the chained coffin in 1995 these drawings are from the early pages of the first Hellboy sketchbook um, Hellboy's dad that's quite a cool thing oh and I think maybe a sister that could have been a neat thing to see a Hellboy sister hell girl um, but yeah just cool like devil demon drawings I love how uh, just his use of like marker pen and stuff. I'd happily look through a whole comic drawn in this like rough, like thumbnail style. Because it's still fucking good. Uh, the, the BPRD headquarters. Eh, cool to see his designs and stuff, but ultimately, drawings of buildings. Yawn! That's what I say. A big yawn to that. Some drawings of Hellboy and this guy. This guy on the right. See, this guy. Um, the frog monster with its tentacle tongue. That's really cool to see. That's a cool drawing of Hellboy. Some guys. That's really fucking good. I like that. And these, I love. Ah, just the shapes. Uh, oh, it's just really fucking cool, man. Japanese demons oni, on eye, on on oni, meant to represent thunder and lightning. I dimly remember some storyline that involved these guys and a living samurai statue. That would have been something. Oh god, I can't turn pages. Um, before Lobster Johnson, there was this guy, some crime fighting investigator guy. Oh, look at those heads. Look at the shading on those heads, man. The solid solidity of the shapes. And I love that Hellboy really does feel like he's made out of stone, even though only, like, he's flesh and blood. But, like, his hand is stone, obviously. But he, as a thing, looks like he's carved out of stone. Um, maybe it's that's partly down to Mignola's art style. Or maybe it was intentional. I don't know. Just cool, cool sketches. I mean, I say that, they're just sketches. There's nothing particularly fantastic or amazing about them. But uh, I'm, I'm very much, especially these days, a big fat Mignola fanboy. I will suck him off until I'm blue in the face. <laughs> oh, until I get blown in the face. Blue. There's a joke in there somewhere. Um... I just, yeah, I like his drawings and I could look at them a lot. Evidently, that's what I do. I look at his drawings a lot because I like them, because they're good, which is a really, you know, a hot take. There you go. There's my hot take. Mike Mignola is good at drawing. Oh, let's get another sip of that uh, beverage of the week. Mm. That's quite cool, though. Because you can, because it's Mountain Dew, and it does taste like Mountain Dew, which does have a you know a specific flavour. Um, but it does still, it tastes like a watermelon Mountain Dew. It's pretty good because you know sometimes they'll do like Coca Cola with vanilla or lemon, and they just taste like shit. <laughs> they don't really taste like the thing they're supposed to taste like. But that one, 
is a really good mix of the Mountain Dew flavour and watermelon. I, I quite like that. That's quite a good one. Um, the other day, do you know what I saw? I saw some cunt wearing sunglasses. What a prick. What a fucking... Piece. Let me try and draw his face. You know, because I had my little rant about people who wear sunglasses just, just about being just fucking cunts. He might end up looking like a Mignola character just because I've just been looking at Mignola characters. Um... Oh, I don't think I'm going to be able to really capture it. Oh, I might. I might have it, actually. Now, he had a bit more of a, a chin and a jaw. Yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. <laughs> that's actually... Okay, yeah, I, I think I've actually got it quite accurate there. Um, so shaved here, buzzed sh back and sides, and then like, almost like a crew cut here with a little tuft on the end, a brow that just went straight into his nose, and then like a, you know, like the caveman, Cro-Magnon fucking um, ape more with the long upper lip. drooling like an idiot um and he was like walking past cars like staring at the cars like like judging the cars the people who in the cars based on um the type of car they have and he just looked like a fucking cunt <laughs> and there's no there's no need for me to be like that i, I could just look at him and go oh it's just some guy but he just looked like such a fucking prick <laughs> and part of that look was absolutely the fact it wasn't even that sunny it's been really stormy here lately the the, the skies are, are gray as fuck at the moment there's no need for him to be wearing sunglasses and he had a tight tight t-shirt to show off the fact that he spends a lot of time working out he was shaped like this um like big and yeah, he had he walked like a fucking ape with his arms out like that. Um, just looking like a fucking dildo. Um, you know, tight shirt showing off all his muscles and then super skinny jeans and whatever. Fashionable trainers, all rips in his jeans and shit. Just a fucking cock end. Um, do you know what I hate? And I've hated for a long time. Fashion, obviously. Um, but I can't, I cannot fucking stand glamour and, and like not nice things. I hate nice things. Um, I consider myself to be anti-glamour. Because uh, I think I've mentioned before how seeing some of the friends I grew up with, like in college. And you know, college, especially in art, art college, art students... You know, they're all pretty rough and ready, and, and especially the, the ones I hung out with, painting graffiti and stuff. You know, some of them wore nice clothes, some of them didn't, but in general, they're pretty just, like, fairly messy, shitty little people. And then some of them grow up, and they develop these, like, fancy lifestyles, and they eat in fine restaurants, and go on ho holidays to sunny places, and they wear fancy, expensive clothes and jewellery and stuff. And I'm just like, oh, like, what happened? to this cool creative person and now it's just fucking sun and sand and sunglass sunglasses ugh. and just looking like a cunt wearing sunglasses um oh this is the gassiest episode ever birthday gas that's what we call that but i've i've always always had like a, a weird discomfort in being around um like clean tidy places like that um i might have spoken about all of this before but i don't give a fuck shut up it's my podcast i'll talk about what i want as much as i want um to the point where there's been times where i've gone to people's houses sat on their bed and gotten up and there's been like legitimate wet ink stains from where i've been sitting where i've just had fucking filthy clothes um and i've ruined these nice pristine white bed sheets just by existing on them um 
and you know, sorry for that. <laughs> uh, but that's just how it is. And then, and because of of being like that, being the filth monger that I am, I've always felt uncomfortable in like clean spaces. Whenever I go into someone's house, usually upper sort of middle class wanna be fucking fancy people's houses where everything's just so fucking neat and proper and tidy. Everything's has its place and it's all, you know, fucking name brand furniture and shit. And I, I, I don't feel like I can be comfortable. Like I can't sit comfortably. I can't be relaxed in a place like that because I don't want to touch anything. I don't want to make anything messy because it's all just so like, ah, oh, it's too much. And it's, I feel it's so unnatural. I've spoken before about how, like, Decay, I've always had a great love of, of Decay, you know, the Lord of Nurgle. Call me, call me Grandfather Nurgle, that's what I am. I'm the great unclean one himself. Um, because Decay is such a part of life, and it's it's in the same way that people try to stop ageing from happening, like fucking idiots. Um... We'll get rid of the grey hairs. We'll get plastic surgery to get rid of those wrinkles. We'll pretend you're young. Pretend that ageing doesn't exist. Pretend every single one of us doesn't go through the exact same processes of ageing constantly. Um, fucking morons. You stupid fucking... Um, it's just... It, it's, it's an absolute denial uh, of... Uh, reality, but just like... And I've got the same arguments for how people try to argue against trans people, like fucking idiots. Oh, they're just denying reality. I was like, no, you're a fucking idiot. Let people be trans. Christ. Um, uh, uh, so I just... You know, you obviously you have every right to keep your home neat and tidy and clean, but it's like when people get to the point of being like um don't don't sit on the couch don't stand on the rug this and that everything has to be clean and spotless all the time and it's like fucking life happens uh, decay happens like sh dirt exists what the fuck are you doing <laughs> allow it allow fucking dirt to exist and i just i fucking i hate glitz and glamour and i, I see people posting on Instagram, like, eating out at fine restaurants and, you know, nice cutlery and wine and, and fine clothes and suits. And it, I feel physically uncomfortable just looking at these pictures. I just can't stand it. It just feels so, like, antithetical to what life actually is. Like, you're... It's like some movie, uh, you know, like, fucking Land of the Dead for as garbage as that film was. Um, it has its upsides, but it's mostly garbage. Um... The people trying to live their glamorous lifestyles in this this uh, tower that's been built for them to be this rich person's paradise away from the filth, all the zombies and stuff. The the incredibly on the nose, heavy handed, ham fisted, fucking social commentary that uh, Romero was was you know famous for, especially later in his career, um, before he fucked off and died as 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 most of us will. Um, uh, uh, it, it, that's what I I see when I see all of this like fine dining and stuff. It's like you know, everyone has the right to enjoy life, and these fine things exist. Um, so why not go out and enjoy them? But and it's obviously it's just a personal tasting. Personally, I'm not into that, so I I won't partake. In the same way, I'm not into sports, so. You know, everyone can like sports. Go ahead, do the sports, but it's not for me, so I'm I'm not going to bother. And it's the same with um, f fine dining and nice clothes. It's like, sure, if you're into that, go ahead. But I I'm I'm not, so I won't. Um, which you know, sorry if you're a, a, ever a, a partner of mine, a potential partner, or a current partner, or whatever you happen to be. Um, it's never going to happen. We're never going to be eating out fine restaurants because I can't fucking do it. I can't bring myself to do it. it. It feels so against sort of everything I I feel as a human being. I feel like I'm doing something wrong just by being there. I feel like I'm around fucking aliens. 
the few times I've been in like nice places, if it's been a restaurant or, or whatever. I was in a gym once. I, I was with, um, I was a kid um, and I was, had a sick day. I think my mum had taken me to the doctor and then she went to see a friend. So we were hanging around with um, her for like brunch or whatever. And then her husband showed up to take her to the gym. Um, and then we went to the gym. Uh, I didn't do anything. We just went in there. Um, my mum was just like going in there to say goodbye to her friend before we went back home. Um, and I stepped foot inside of this gym and it was obviously like a, a sort of like upmarket gym. And it was just so fucking like nice and posh and clean and rich like obviously everyone in there was just like money and I just felt so fucking uncomfortable and I think that's what it is is part of it at least is, is all of this you know glamorous lifestyle and stuff it's, it's a sign of, of uh, wealth and opulence and ultimately capitalism and fuck every single aspect of all of that fuck it into the ground and burn it because it it's fucking horrendous. Money is shouldn't exist. Money is one of the f most fucking like I understand the concept of it from from back in the day, but from what it's become now, it's one of the most fucking. Pardon my French. It's one of the most fucking retarded things ever. Is is the concept of money as as we know it, uh, and it's just it, I can't feel comfortable with it, and I won't. And I hate, I hate it so much. And so all I want, kind of as a result of all of that, is just I want to be as dirty and filthy as possible. And I mean that not in terms of like I want to say fuck a lot and I want to say cunt a lot and I piss on everything. Like I just, I, I just, like that's why I, 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 I'm comfortable in dirty clothes. I have this shirt that um, uh, Sam, I think Sam's mum or something, got me for a Christmas present when I was around there last. Um, and I, I've not worn it this during the summer, but certainly uh, for the first half of this year, I wore that almost every day as like a house coat almost. It's like a, a grey, black and white uh, checkered shirt with a hood attached, like a grey hood attached. It's quite a decent, like nice shirt, light jacket sort of combo thing. Um, yeah, wore that every day, every single day. I wake up, throw that on, you know, on top of my shirt or whatever I was wearing in bed. Um, and then it's just like my house coat. Like, it's just comfortable, light thing to wear in the house. Um, and it has not been washed once. <laughs> and I've worn it for months and months and months. And the cuffs are all filthy because I wore it in so many podcasts, drawing, painting. And, you know, it's probably drenched in sweat. It probably stinks. But it's so comfortable. And it's this, like, if you get, um, you know, a, a new pair of jeans or something and you wear them and they're really, really comfortable, you wash them once and they lose... I mean, you can use fabric softeners and this and that, but you never, you never get back that original softness and comfort. And for me, it's not about keeping the original comfort, but it's about being comfortable in what you are. And if that part of that is clothing, then it's like, oh, this thing's dirty, but like, it's comfortable. So fuck it. And that's why I talk about if if I was just to wear you know, what I'm genuinely comfortable wearing, it would literally be rags, like just filthy rags I throw on myself and just go, ah, this is light and comfortable and it covers me and that's all I need. And then the idea of having like new, clean clothes, it's just so like, ugh, and just can't do anything in them because the second you put on a, and I do the same, I put on a, a, a new, a brand new store-bought, like clean white shirt, like just t-shirt or whatever, and then I, I'm worried about getting shit on it and, and keeping it clean and, and whatever. And like, fucking stop it. <laughs> Just let dirt happen. Which is what I think I've, I've vaguely spoken about my idea for you and merch. Uh, merch. Um, so if I was going to have you and like official you and YouTuber merch, it would be you get a t-shirt and a Sharpie and you write you and on it. And that's the official Ewan merch. But it's only it's only official Ewan merch if you never wash it. For one thing, you might wash out the Sharpie. Um, but for another thing, the, the fact that it's a dirty, filthy shirt with Ewan written on it in Sharpie by yourself or who, whoever, that's what makes it true Ewan merch, is the fact that it's never washed. It's just dirty. And that's, that's where I'm most comfortable. And that's 
what I sort of aim for. And I wish I could really put that across in my artwork, but I struggle to. I think sometimes I do it successfully, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I try, I, I'll be like just doing stuff like this, like little bits of texture, you know, just to add like what looks like flecks of dirt and stuff and smudge them if, if it doesn't dry too quick or whatever, just stuff. And that's why I'm, I'm happy, happy if I'm using ballpoint pen and you get like blobs and blotches here and there and smears where the ink blobs out of the pen. I'm so happy for that to happen. I see some ballpoint artists will like um, have a separate bit of paper to like wipe the blobs off of and then continue to do neat pristine drawings. And that's fine if that's what you're into. But I, the dirt, the dirt is so importante to me. Um, and like I say, I really, I aim to put that across in my work and I don't feel that I necessarily do that adequately, as adequately as I want to. And there might be, you know, I might get people saying, no, I really see that in your work. I do see like this, this dirt and, you know, maybe some kind of energy in there. Um, and that's cool, but I, I still feel personally, I'm not quite achieving the level of filth <laughs> that I aim for. Um, and you know, the content, like being filthy, like toilet humor, boobs and willies and farts, that's part of it. Um, but it's largely literal, like dirt and decay and grime. That's why in this, um, the drawing contest I've been in a few times, um, at the start of it, isn't that cool? I quite like that, it's teeth. Um, oh, it's smudged, oh no, it's dirty, oh no, what will happen? Um, in, that, in, in that drawing contest, they asked us, uh, what our illustration style is. So you've got like, my style is very graffiti oriented or it's very cartoony or whatever. And I couldn't really think of what mine was. So I said like grime or grimy because that's sort of what I aim for. Maybe it doesn't come across like that all the time, but it's certainly what I aim for in my um, illustration style is is at least some level of, of grime. Um, which like I say, I, sometimes I think I get that relatively successfully sometimes not and then maybe that's something to work on you know as is as an artist if if you stop striving if you go oh cool i found i found you know what i'm aiming for and now i'll just do that forever then it's like you know i think that becomes visible i think i see that in some artists work where they found their thing and then they just do that and I'm almost worried about that happening to me. Um, I worry sometimes that that has happened already. Like, oh, I just draw ballpoint butts, so that's all I need to do now. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm so, I used to write shit on, I had um, this backpack. I really like this, <laughs> the head especially. I'm really happy with that. Um, I used to have this backpack. Um, is it like a, a brown, just, you know, an average sort of backpack pocket on here, zipper, uh, fucking thing, and then, then straps and whatever. Um, you know, a backpack. And then here, I always had like graffiti and drawing and shit all over it, but then here I'd often, uh, I'd black it out with black acrylic paint and then in white pen, write something here you know like anarchy in the uk because it was when i was at college it was very much like punk anarchy graffiti skateboarding that kind of thing and one of my favorite things that i had on there was um i think it said destroy fashion um that yeah just destroy fashion written across there you know like wearing a little message like a bumper sticker basically on my backpack to show off to people this is how i feel man destroy fashion yeah anarchy in the uk yeah man but that's something i still stand behind because it's like fashion is is this icon of glitz and glamour and excess um and opulence and richness that I just despise with every fucking thread of the fabric of my being. Um, and I just, I want it all to fucking burn. <laughs> and I hate it so much. Um, I was thinking of, of going out tagging again um, and having my graffiti name literally be the word dirt. And so I'd go around tagging dirt everywhere. Um, 
Because I thought of like a few different words I could use. Um, like I thought drock was quite quite a, quite a good one, which is uh, like um, a stand-in for I guess the word fuck in the 2000 AD like Judge Dredd comics. Everyone will go like, oh drock, it's the fuzz or whatever. It's the judges are here. Drock, drock this, drock you. Like instead of saying the f word, they say drock, d r o k. And I've written that in graffiti a couple of times, and it's quite a good word. Like it's a it's a very sort of solid, heavy sounding word. The d and the k. Drock is a very sort of like solid word and it works visually for graffiti. Um, but I, I think if I was going to start writing a name regularly, again and again, repetitively, having a word that that's that's like writing the word fucking zap or something like it's a comic book word that exists. Um, but then I thought, what what do I what, if if I want something that represents me a bit more? Um something a bit dirtier and I thought of dirt there's the graffiti writer Arrow who's like one of the bigger graffiti writers in uh, the world uh, A-R-O-E um, because every graffiti writer uses arrows and they all talk about arrows in their work like this thing they all use those as like a design thing so Arrow took the word Arrow as his name and that's genius in that way and that represents him and his graffiti all in this one word. And so I figure if I use the word dirt as my graffiti name, my pseudonym, you know, that represents sort of me and what I'm about. Um, and it's, it, you can get some good letters out of that, you know. Um, give it some time to try and, and get some uh, designs and things. It's been a while since I've really drawn graffiti, so I'm not as as great at it as I used to be. Dirt, yeah, you know, and then I can paint them dirtily and, and messily and, and just try to sort of be true to my, my grimy, horrible essence. I don't know. But hey, look, a blue thing on the blue page, yeah!